Okay, there you go. So now it is recording. If you want to turn off your video, you're more than welcome to turn off your video because it is recording. Um, yes, can I make it so that the only the teacher sees the student names? So you actually have a choice over here. So once again, if you were looking at my Zoom, um, in my Zoom shared window, I have over here hide student names. If I hide all student names, um, then no one would be able to see the names, okay? And it shows your names because you have it typed in, but you don't have to. Um, if you're just working on facts, right, or answers or whatnot, it usually doesn't show student names. I talk to my students about having their names being shared because we build this entire community with our students, right? And then they're, that way they're able to respond to each other as well by, um, in terms of posts. Like, Allison, I really like what you said. And then here's my little comment after, underneath, okay? Um, so that is what the collaborative board is all about. Next activity. What is your experience with Nearpod? Here is a poll that is given in Nearpod. So go ahead and put in your response. So once again, you are back in your Nearpod tab. Um, and just share your experience with us. If you use it regularly, if you don't know anything at all, that's why you are here. Um, if you have experience with it. I use this um, for distance learning and I actually have it on student pace mode for my students um, because I have my courses done asynchronously. And so I just have my students go through, I'm like, your job is to just go through Nearpod and answer the activities, you know, respond to the activities, respond to, you know, when it says watch a video, watch the video, right? Um, so that is their job to just go through this whole thing. All right. So over here, I can, there are still 35% of you who have not yet responded. So please go ahead and put in your response. In the meantime, though, I am going to click share. So on your screen right now, you are able to see the responses that your students have given or that all of the students, the participants have given. So if you are doing a check for understanding or you are voting like a this or that kind of activity, right? You can share the response with your students so that they can actually see what's, what um, the responses are. And then you then can correct or talk about what the correct response was, what the incorrect response was, and then you can say, you know what, let's try that again and give it, you know, let's choose the correct answer, right? If you had the majority of the students choosing the wrong answer. So this is a poll and then I can unshare that response as well. Next, here is matching each words with the corresponding or matching each picture with the corresponding word. This is a matching activity. So go ahead and try to match things. This is simple. Um, give it a try. And once you are done, I invite you to come over to my Zoom screen and see what I see. Because it actually tells me on my end the number of tries it took you to match these items. So imagine doing a vocabulary, like this is your, um, vocabulary practice at the beginning of a unit, right? Or you're checking to see if they're able to match the words with your, um, with, match the words with the pictures if you are a language teacher, you know? So you can see the number of tries. I do this for vocabulary with my students, especially when I was doing um, my STEM project-based learning course. And because my students saw this, it was like eight vocabulary words. So technically eight tries would be a perfect score, right? But because my students saw this, one kid was like, whoa, 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 Allison finished in like 14 tries and I got 17. Allison, guess what? I'm going to try to beat you. And then so my students, they were like, hey, Dr. Sun, can we have like another try in an, at this just because I want to try to get it done faster or in less tries? So my students ended up having a competition with each other to try to get the correct vocabulary words with the right definition all on their own, like in their own volition. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. So I'm like, yeah, go ahead and practice these vocabulary words some more. 
you know, <laughs> I'm not going to argue against that. So I found that to be really, really neat. Um, and this is just the matching that is available for your students in Nearpod. Next, we are going to work on a fill in the blank. So go ahead and try to fill in the blanks. This one, it does give you a score. Um, so go ahead and try it out. And it came from the distance learning playbook. Valerie, we do have a question. I don't know if uh, you've answered it yet about how do you reset the matching or the polls so kids can try again? Um, I just go back one and then come back again. Perfect. Yep. So I basically just reload the slide. Nice. Yep. All right. Go ahead. You can match it. Nicole's got it. Allison's got it. And if you don't feel like reading through it, it's all good because this is just practice. I just want you to see what the students are going through, right? And the type of activities that you can put in there, okay? And I, on my end, I can view the answers as well. So then I can give my students the correct responses um, so that we could talk about it as well, okay? All right. Any questions about fill in the blanks? And I get to see the five out of five scores as well um, for my students. And all of these are recorded in Nearpod so that when I do look at responses, because I when I do want to get when I do give students credit for what they are doing, I could just look in my reports and see how they've done. In Nearpod, when in your settings, you can choose in student paced mode to force students to complete every single activity before they're able to move on. That is a setting that is available for students. I don't have that put on for my students because sometimes they close a session and it doesn't save the student session. So sometimes I have the same student who signs in three or four times because it is an asynchronous activity that they do. So they're able to hop over the ones that they have already done and then just continue with the next activities. All right, next, we are going to start a drawing activity. This is the draw it one. You have about a minute and 30 seconds. And just how do you feel about this current school year? Make a drawing, find an emoji, or write a word. So go ahead and give it a try. Play with the different pen functions that are available to you. Um, you could use the text box as well. So go ahead and give that a try. And you can see on my end that there is a timer and that I can actually see what you are drawing. It tells me that it is in progress. So give it a try. Use the text box. For, to insert in an emoji, you would have to Google search. Um, you have to do the image search. And as you can see, you can also click on the image that I have put on the side too, if you want to. And if you click on it, it enlarges it for you, okay? For this, I chose to add in a picture. If you would like to use a draw activity with a video, you're able to embed in a video. If you are able to embed in a website, you are able to embed in just a voice recording. So then this is something that you can do for your students. Like I like to use this as a sketch and tell. So sometimes as a language teacher, they list, my students listen to an excerpt either of a video or an audio excerpt. And then their job is to try to sketch what is going on and then write about what is going on as well. So there you go. The timer has stopped. So then everybody's work is forced submitted to me. And this is the fun part where I can just click on a person. Allison, I am picking on you. I can share this with everybody. So now all of you can see Allison's response. And I can say, Allison, can you please unmute yourself and share with us what your thoughts were on this? And you're saying that the emails never stop. <laughs> 
right? So then here is a chance for me to have my students participate with me in a live session, if it's a live session, um, about what's going on, you know? And then I can unshare, and then I can go on to the next student and say, oh, you know what, Lisa, that is a great image that you chose, or that's a great sentence that you chose, or that you chose to write. So tell us about it, like unmute yourself and talk to us about it, right? So that is what I do for, this is the draft function. This is what I usually do for my draft functions. Um, next, here within Nearpod, you also have 3D models that you can play with. So go ahead, you know, um, play with the 3D model. Maybe I'm a science teacher and I'm talking about animal cells, right? I can use this and be like, all right, ladies and gents, I would like for you to name the parts of an animal cell. You know, and then they can go through and name it because it is not there, um, or the names are not there, and I could talk to them about it, right? I could also make it full screen so that it becomes even bigger. Go ahead and spin it around. They have all sorts of different 3D models that are already embedded within Nearpod. They have a skeletal system as well, a nervous system. Um, they have a plant cell, an animal cell. They have like parts of a butterfly too. It's really, really neat. So go ahead and that is the 3D model. I am going to click next. Here you have a memory test and it is just exactly like what it is. It's a memory test. It could be a brain break for your students of just finding the right answers or finding matching the right images together. All of the images are done through Google search images though. Okay, so you can just click through. It is a nice little brain break. I don't use memory test very often with my students because I, I don't, but I imagine if I were teaching kindergarten again, this is something that I would use with my students. I'm going to move on to the next activity. Here is FET. So FET is al also already embedded into Nearpod. If you are a FET user, it's got a lot of map and science digital manipulatives. So go ahead and choose your perimeter, right? Um, you, you can connect them together. And as you can see, it corrected my mistake on my end. You can try to use the two comparisons as well. Maybe the activity is find the perimeter um, or create a shape that has the same area but different perimeters right so that the students can kind of play with this idea that is FET I am going to move on to the next one if you want to have more time to play with this I did also start a student session or a student paced session so you can always go back in and see what it feels like from the student end okay Next, this is a quiz. I only embedded one question in this quiz. And here we go. It says, which of the following can be embedded into Nearpod? Go ahead and give it a try, answer the question. And just as a hint, it can embed almost everything that is on there except its competitor. <laughs> so go ahead and give it a try. So once again, it could do everything aside from embedding its competitor. Its competitor, however, is able to embed Nearpod stuff. So that's kind of a funny thing. You got about 10 more seconds. What is Sway? Carolyn, that's a really great answer. Sway is a Microsoft presentation tool um, that focus, it's kind of like a, a bunch of vocabulary, you could, there are all sorts of ways to do it. You can, it's just a presentation tool um, where it takes you through slide decks, it takes you through photo decks, it takes you through um, words, but it has a lot of embedded sway items already. So you're like, I wanna take a look at forest animals um, and it has a sway deck prepared for you for all of the forest animals and then you get to learn about them. It, and if you, your students create their own sways, then they can use that as well. 
What I do love about Sway is you don't ever have to worry about the aesthetics of everything because you just put in your words and you put in your pictures and then Sway takes care of all of that for you. All right, so as you can see, Nearpod is super duper powerful because it can embed all sorts of items in there for you. Next, we have a video, okay? And if you wanna come on over to my end, you can see here is a choice. It says, where would you like this video to be played? Do I want it to be played on all devices or do I only want it to play on my device shared with all of you? I generally click on all devices because we are learning in our own individual spaces. When I do this, I send my students out to individual breakout rooms. So they're in their own breakout rooms by themselves. And I know that this video is a two minute video or a one minute video or a three minute video. And I would say, all right, it's a three minute video that you're gonna watch, but I am gonna set a timer for five minutes so that my students can also go back and watch certain parts of the video if they want to, okay? So I am going to click all devices. And as you can see, there is a brand new tool in here. There are two questions embedded. Um, so if you have been an Edpuzzle user, Nearpod just put in these tools that are very much like Edpuzzle where you can add in two different types of questions in here now, okay? So go ahead. It is a one minute video and go ahead and go through this activity. If you wanna mute yourself so that you can go through the activity so that we don't hear your audio, that is definitely an option. I'm gonna put my timer on for a minute and 30 seconds. All right. Um, your screen shows are, and there are no questions. There should be a question right over there for you. Um, that's so weird. Because if you come over to my screen, um, there you go. Now we have people answering questions. So then I can actually talk about the questions that um, you have put in there, okay? Yay, the question just showed. That's fantastic. Maybe there was a little bit of a lag. Okay, so this is what the video, so you can embed in a video without any of these questions, or you can embed a video and then add in these questions. With the multiple choice, you do have to select a correct answer, um, which is kind of a bummer. And they only let you select one correct answer, whereas the actual multiple choice quiz within your pod lets you select multiple ones. So this is what the um, video experience is like. I am going to move on to the next activity. So in the next one, here is time to climb. Time to Climb is like quizzes in a way where all of you answer questions together. Okay, I'm gonna randomize your answers. We're gonna go to space next time. I am going to not enable the sound because the sound gets a little too crazy for me. 
um, I get a little overly stimulated by the sound, so I turned off the sound, okay? Um, but go ahead, I'm gonna click continue. Go ahead and join us to start this game. You will be answering six questions about Nearpod. And this is also available in the student pace mode as well. It's just that the student will be the only one climbing, whereas when we play collectively together in a live session, we all get to um, climb together. Okay, there are seven people connected. We're waiting for a few more people. Um, but for the sake of time, I am going to start. And those of you who are joining us a little bit later, it is absolutely okay. You can join us in the middle of the game as well. So I am going to start. So Nearpod is available for all teachers. Fantastic, we've got Nicole with 862 points in first place. The faster you answer, the faster or the more points you will get. There is a Google Slides add-on for Nearpod. True or false? Nicole and Lisa are both rocking it. Next question. Students need a Nearpod account to access Nearpod lessons. Is that true or false? Nicole, you are on a roll. Nearpod keeps all the activity data that is easily accessible for all teachers. True or false? Good job, all of y'all climbing together. Reports are available for individual student download and for the whole class. Allison just got bumped up to 4,000 points. Good job, Allison. And here is our last question. Nearpod can be used synchronously and asynchronously. True or false? And boom, we have Allison in first place, Nicole in second place, Libby in third place, Carolyn in fourth place, Sophia in fifth. Great job, everybody. So then now you get to see how this game works. My students love this. The middle school students absolutely loved it. Um, and the elementary students, when I have tried this activity with them, they seem to really dig it as well. So it is something that you can do with your students, um, just to have a fun check for understanding. And lastly, this is an open response. And how do you feel about Nearpod as a support for distance learning? I want you to take a look at the bottom. I gave you the choice to record your answer. So if you have students who have IEPs who have a hard time or who need that extra assistance, you can definitely let them record their answer as opposed to typing in their answers, okay? So whenever you are ready, you've got 45 seconds to answer. And once again, you can click on the image um, and this is the media that you're able to add in and the media can once again be a video, it could be a website, it could be um, a voice clip. So you have lots of ideas, you have lots of options in putting in the type of support you want to have for students answering the question. And as always, uh, Michelle, I am going to share your answer. So maybe one of my students, maybe it's a grammar question, right? Um, I can actually click on an answer and I can share the answer with everybody. And I can say, ladies and gents, take a look. Michelle did such a great job. She wrote in a complete sentence. She had her capitalized letter at the beginning and she ended it with the period, you know? Um, so I can brag about or talk about what the student samples are, okay? Um, 
And I am going to scroll down to see if any of you recorded your answers. None of you recorded your answers, but if one of you did record your answers, I would um, be able to hit the, there's a little play button. So all I would have to do is click the play button and then I'll be able to hear your response. Okay, and it is a great platform. Um, there is a free version and there is a gold version. The gold version does cost $120 per year. Um, so it's 10 bucks a month. Um, but if you just sign up first, they give you, I think, one month for free. The difference between the silver version and the gold version is the amount of memory you have in your account. And also the free version does not allow you to have student paced lessons. It only allows you to have a live lessons. All right, so in terms of preparation, like what do you actually have to do, right? Um, within Nearpod, if you do have the gold version, it is like a freemium kind of thing, right? Um, there are 8,000 pre-made lessons that you have access to. My favorite part is that there is a Google add-on. So I prepared everything in my Google Slides, um, and then I just used the add-on to put in all of the activities. PowerPoint can also be used as well. One of the difficult parts is if you are an animations person on your slides, um, everything becomes flat, okay? So anima animations don't transfer at all. But the really cool part is maybe I co-teach with other teachers or I'm in the same grade level groups. I can actually create a Nearpod lesson and then share it with my co-teachers so that they don't have to recreate the same things makes it super duper easy and this is just what the side panel add-on looks like in Nearpod. So as you can see you could add an audio, there's BBC video that you can add in, there's a collaborate, there's the draw it which you all got to experience and then you just got to scroll down to find all of them. When to use what? I am just gonna hop through this super duper fast. These follow Madeline Hunter's seven elements in her, a lesson plan. So getting started, getting students really excited about the lesson, these are some of the activities that you can do. You can explore and synthesize by using a video or going on a field trip, right? Um, next, for the purpose, what is the academic need? Here are all of the different things that you can use. I threw a vocabulary on there because it does work together with vocabulary. However, um, you need to have a vocabulary account in order to use vocabulary and it's kind of a bummer, but you know, it's one more thing you have to pay for, right? So I don't actually use vocabulary very often, although it does seem really cool. Um, what students need um, for in terms of information and facts. So here are all of the different ways that you can add in facts for your students, right? Or how you can have them input information. Um, I love the fact that you can just put in a PDF viewer as well, um, so that if you have PDFs that you need students to read or to annotate, that is definitely something that they can do. Um, guided practice, how are you going to know um, what is sticking for your students so that you can have some checks for understanding? These are all the activities that you could have for checks for understanding. Modeling, what does a student product actually look like? You can have them put in a flip grid, you could have open-ended questions, you could have time to climb, lots of options for how you can model the understanding that you want for your students and then how you can check for understanding as well. You can do a poll. And for me, as I am teaching a lesson, maybe I'm teaching a live lesson right now, right? Um, I can add, I realize that there's something that my students really aren't understanding or I need to add in a website. I can click on add activity. So if you wanna hop on over to my Zoom window right now, um, I have my add activity right over here. I click on it and I could say, all right, ladies and gents, you know what? Um, we are going to do a an open-ended question right now so what other questions do you have uh about nearpod right um because i realize that there's something that's not working really well right now so i throw out that question and then you actually have that question that you can answer right now um if it decides to load <laughs> yay internet problems there you go so here are some questions that you may possibly have. You can choose to not participate in this activity if you don't want to. Um, and then 
once I feel like I got everybody's answers, I have my checks for understanding, right? Uh, most of you are saying, or two of you are saying none at this time. All I gotta do is click on close the activity. Um, Michelle, that is a great question. We are not able to switch between instructor pace and student pace like Pear Deck does. You would have to have two sessions going at the same time. So I actually have two sessions, but students would have to log in two different times. It's separate from each other. That is one of the downfalls. Okay. Um, the best way for students to access the Nearpod, I actually just have them access it on their computer and usually during a live session, just like how I'm doing it with you, I ask them to basically stay in the Nearpod tab. And then as I tell you, like, come on over to, you know, to my Zoom window and take a look at what I am showing. Um, they just have to toggle between the two of them. Okay, I don't think they need a second device though. All right, so I am going to close the activity. I am going to end it. So if you, in the middle of a prepared lesson, you're like, oh no, I forgot to give them a, a link. I forgot to give them a slide. You could definitely add that in there. Oops. Close the activity. Do you want to? Yes. There you go. Um, so then there's independent practice of what they can do and then closing of the lesson, right? So let's go over and make one. If you hover over your Nearpod, you will see that because there is a link on there, there's going to be a little box that forms. So go ahead and click on that link. It is going to be a forced copy. So go ahead and click make a copy. And I am gonna take you through in how to add these activities in. And you will realize that it is pretty darn easy. Okay, um, so here I am. You want to get the add-on first. So how do you get the add-on? If you wanna come on over to my screen right now, I am going to show you. Um, you are in Google Slides and there is at the very top, there is a button that's, or there is a tab that says add-on. So you wanna click on add-on. I have Nearpod already, but in case you don't, you wanna click on get add-ons and it's pretty darn smart that it knows which are the most popular items to add on to your Google Slides add-on. And then you're gonna see Nearpod as one of them right over here. So you just click on that and it will install it for you. The really tricky part is though, you want to make sure that you have it installed on the right account for you. Maybe you, are, you want to install it on your school account. So just make sure over here, you know, your site, you are signing into the right person, okay? That you are signing to the right school account. And then once you are done here, oops, let me turn on my add-on. And then I just click on open Nearpod. If it's your first time doing it, it is going to ask you to sign in. And you can sign in with Google for sure. Um, Sometimes it gets confused with the main account that you are on if you toggle between multiple accounts. So that is something you want to be really careful of. I create various Google profiles so that my personal account doesn't get mixed into my work accounts. And that's something that you may want to look into doing. But here we are. Um, I have my Nearpod add-on open and here is the link for Mesopotamia, right? So my idea is that I want to add this website in directly already for my students. So I'm just going to copy and copy that. And I'm going to scroll down on my tab and click on web content. Okay. So I'm clicking on web content and it just asks me for the link. So now I copy in my link. I can always test the link to be sure that it is a working link. And then after that, I click save. And unlike Pear Deck, where it has the information on the same slide, in Nearpod, it creates a second slide for you. So as you can see, my Mesopotamia slide is right over here and the web content is on a second slide, okay? 
Next, we're gonna go on a virtual field trip. So when I go on a virtual field trip, all I gotta do is scroll up to my tools right over here and I click on field trip and you get to see where you wanna go. You can search, it's powered by 360 cities. Um, there are lots of different things you can search and maybe I'm gonna search under the sea, right? So here is my search for under the sea. And when my internet is faster, here we are. Um, it is not giving me under the sea choices. Let's go for coral reef. And hopefully that one will have more choices for us. That are actual, there you go. So now we have the new Caledonia Coral Reef Reserve, the Island Resort Coral Reef number five coral reef in New Caledonia. Maybe that's the one I want. I can preview it, or if I already know what it is, I can just click done. And then now it has that added in for my students. What are some of your questions for me in terms of adding things in? Um, I find it pretty easy to add in information. I should say one thing, oops, one thing about the collaborative board. Um, in the collaborative board, you have your comment, your topic, and you can enter in a picture and then your description. You have five different choices. When you are putting in a collaborative board, Nearpod has it so that in student paced sessions, it gets skipped. Um, students are not allowed to post because it wants to make sure that it has the correct information and safe information that is being posted without your approval. Okay, so if you do want to use your collaborative board during asynchronous or student paced Nearpods, you have to go into your settings and within your settings, you want to turn on that students can post. Otherwise, it will just be skipped through and it will say you are not allowed to post and on your collaborative board. So there you go. And then as you can see in draw it, um, you have your media choice right over here. You could choose a background as well. So maybe you have a KWL chart over here, or maybe you have a sketch and tell that you want your students to use. You can upload a background image. Okay, um, and then here are all of your content choices that you can have for your students. And so every single time it will create a separate slide for you with the information. What are some of your questions for me about this? We have about 10 minutes left. Um, if you want to copy a slide, we'll also copy um, the Nearpod, or do I need to add that activity again? Um, copy, Allison, do you mean copying a slide as in from one presentation to the next, pre to a different presentation? Or did you mean by in the same presentation you wanted to copy one slide to bring it down? In the same, pre oh yeah, um, you, um, that is a good question. I don't, I haven't, I've never duplicated the same Nearpod activity. So maybe give it a try. I don't, I'm not sure. And I, Michelle, I've never added a timer on the fly. I don't know if that is a possibility. Okay. Um, I usually add my timers in, in advance. So, and I, add timers in in advance because I have tendencies to <laughs> to spend a lot of time on something and I do let timers kind of run my class so that way I stick to what it is that I need to do. Okay, um, here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you what it looks like on the teacher end when it comes to reports. So here I am. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, 
if you want to come over to my end really quickly on Zoom, you see this little book and the, um, and the speaker. Immersion Reader is built into all of the Nearpod slides. So if your students have a hard time reading, anytime you have text that you have typed in, it will be able to read it for you. Okay. Um, it doesn't read images though. So if you have if you put in an image, it's not going to be able to read what is on that image. But if it's text that you have typed in, um, it is able to read that. So while we are here, I am going to leave this session. And as you can see over here, this is my normal Nearpod screen, right? So here I am. This is my profile. I am going to go to lesson settings. This is where um, I can have my students autofill names if they log in with Google or 365. There are a lot of teachers who do that. I actually don't do that for my students just because it forces them to log in with one account or another. Um, I just have them fill in last name, first name. I enable the immersive reader, enable student notes. Um, that way, so that when you are taking notes for yourself, the notes get sent to you, um, kind of like how near, um, Pear Deck sends you a resume when you are done at the end. The enabling student notes lets your students have a copy of your Nearpod deck with their responses afterward and their notes. You can show quizzes and multiple um, choice results for your students. Allow students to resubmit answers because I think that that is important. Here is the big one and enable collaborate board for student paced lessons. This is automatically turned off, like I had said, so I have it turned on so that they can post directly. You just want to really have a talk with your students about digital citizenship skills um, before you let them loose to post. Okay, I had to have that talk with my middle school students quite often. Um, and require student submissions. The I have it turned off simply because I have students who go in and have, you know, they, because it is a student paced one, whenever they close the tab, if they want to come back in, they have, it doesn't pick up right where they left off. It doesn't save their progress. So I have it turned off so that they can skip through to the items that they have already completed. Here we go. And then I'm going to go back to Nearpod. Here is reports. So my reports, I have Nearpod got you covered right over here. And as you can see, I have different sessions running. You are able to rename the sessions. So this I am going to type in as EdCamp OCLA. Okay, and I can click on it. If you are a high school teacher, as a middle school teacher, I launched each session before my class so that it was by name but you can also just go in and launch various sessions and then name them period one, period two, period three. In my session reports, it gives you the overall summary of the number of students that have participated and the correct answers um, for the quizzes. I can also go in and I can see how, men, how much participation there was for every single person, okay? Um, it's a quick overview. I can go into the quiz and I can see my students' responses. In the poll, I can also see all of my students' responses. So it goes through and provides specific information for every single person. And in the interactive video, I can also see how the student has done. There you go. Okay, it has the student reports right over here. It opens in a new tab. Um, the fill in the blanks, I can see how my students have done as well in time to climb. So it has data for every single person. Um, in the draw it, it actually has every single person's drawings. When I had students who drew some inappropriate things, I can actually click download and I have download the student view. Um, and then it shows me what each student has accomplished. So there's been times teaching middle school where I was like, oh, you know, um, mom, dad, check out what your child decided to draw in class, right? 
And I've also used it in IEPs, like look at how awesome your student is doing, you know, compared from the beginning of the year where this was like the type of information that they were providing and end of the year, this is the type of information that they were providing. And it, we were able to make some really good comparisons too. So lots of different ways in how you can use the session report. And as you can see, I, everything here, it is written down in alphabetical order, which is why once again, I always ask my students to log in using last name, first name. And it is a convention that they are used to using um, at the very beginning of the school year. I always told them like it's last name, first name, last name, first name, like you get five extra points just for having the right convention. And they're like, woo, five extra points, right? But some students don't follow instructions. I'm like, sorry, you get zero for that day. But the following day when I am using Nearpod again, and I'm like last name, first name, and Johnny actually got it correct, I give him points for that day and also points for the day before because then that really encourages him to put in the right, um, put in the right name function. So then when I do have to go through and put grades in, you know, it works for me because it's already in alphabetical order. Some of my teacher friends have asked me before if I would just have one live session for all of my periods and that is insanity. So please do not do that. I would have one for every single period. Okay. And Michelle, you said you have duplicated activities, um, but you're thinking it don't have the hang of what it looks like in your pod. Um, I'm not really sure what you're talking about, Michelle. Do you want to explain that in, like unmute yourself and explain what you mean by that? So when they were asking about duplicating the activities, um, I had my kids do two truths and a lie and I tried to cut and paste them all into Nearpod. And so it wasn't like slide, activity, slide, activity, slide, activity, like it seems like you're explaining. It was just slide with the, um, which one do you think is a lie? Slide, which one do you think is the lie? Slide, you know? So I had there, it wasn't slide, then the activity. Gotcha. So I'm thinking that I haven't done enough with Nearpod to actually know what it looks like. I would have it as a poll. And then so in the poll, you would just have the um, the truth or lie that the student said, right? And then the poll on the bottom would just be, is this true? Like true or false? you know, truth or lie, right? And then the students get to vote that way, as opposed to having the information on the first slide and then adding in the activity, the question would just be already embedded with the poll. Does okay, that, that is how I did it. Okay. Okay. Um, I am going to stop sharing my screen. We have one minute left. What are your questions? What are your other questions for me about Nearpod? Um, and if you want to um, have access to the actual slide deck where everything was created, all you gotta do is go to bit.ly slash NP got you and you will have access to the slide deck and it has a student paste version on there so that you, if you want to see what the student activities look like from the student's end, you're more than welcome to use that, okay? I'm going to stop the recording now.